Okay, so uh, now finally, let's look at the mathematical formulation of the inverse problem in computerized tomography. First of all, um, what does computerized tomography do? What does a tomograph do? It takes the attenuation function in my body and computes from that line integrals theoretically uh, over all lines that cross my body. Okay, so um, we'll have to formulate that. First of all, we'll somehow have to come up with a space where the images lie in. So uh, let's take n equals to two. So uh, we take a disk of my body and what comes into the computer tom computer into tomograph is uh, the attenuation function on uh, that disk or on, on, um, on R2. Uh, if we extend it with zeros to the outside. So um, what comes into that operator is a function on R2, and uh, we keep in mind that should be the attenuation function. Uh, we need to find a function space uh, where that lies in, and uh, we want to be very, very simple for the beginning, so we take a very simple function space, and that's the Schwartz space of rapidly decaying functions. And it's simply, it consists of all C infinity functions that decay exponentially. So as one is defined as all as the functions F that are in C infinity of Rn and uh, which stay bounded uh, if I take any derivative and multiply by any polynomial. Okay, so uh, if, it, uh, if that is bounded, that means that uh, all derivatives of f decay faster than and then all polynomials. Um, so it decays exponentially, right? Okay, good. Okay, so uh, that's the Schwartz space of rapidly decaying functions and we'll make use of that quite often. It's so simple because mathematically you can do everything with it without thinking. Everything works. It's one of the nicest spaces you can actually think of. Um, in reality, it's actually too nice because um, it doesn't really model. It, it's not a correct function space if you think of reality because um, in my body, probably, well, the, let's say, air or a bone are probably touching each other, uh, which means that the attenuation coefficient is zero on this side over here. And uh, it's definitely not zero right after the point where the two touch. So you have a jump in the attenuation function. And in fact, uh, the attenuation function is not even continuous, not to say it's, it's definitely not infinitely many uh, times uh, differentiable. So uh, that's, well, it's for the sake of the beginning, right? So that would be very easy, but at some point we'll have to think of something that's more realistic. Okay, um, now um, let's take uh, what does the, uh, the uh, computer tomograph do? It computes line integrals for n equals 2. So uh, for simplicity, let us assume at this point that uh, the computer tomograph can measure all integrals over all, all lines over that function. So um, we have to somehow parameterize those uh, the the lines, and uh, then we can complete uh, compute the line integrals. And the easiest way of doing that, and the standard way of doing that, is we define uh, the standard cylinder in um, um, our n plus one as um, the the uh, the set S n minus one times r, where s n minus one are the vectors in the unit ball in r n. Okay, so uh, take some element theta and s in c, where that consists of uh, one vector theta in the unit ball. So that's the direction. I mean, we take n equals two. So uh, the unit ball is s one. That's just the unit circle. So theta is some element in the unit circle. So that's just simply a unit direction. Okay. And uh, S is a real value. And uh, we look at the set E of theta and S, which consists of all X with the properties that X times theta 
is S, and you know quite well this is this is an n minus one dimensional hyperplane in R uh, in R n. Its normal is theta, so theta is perpendicular to the plane, and the distance from the or origin is the absolute value of S. Okay, uh, so. Um, just to recapitulate that, for n equals 2, uh, e of theta and s is a line, right? I mean, um, yeah, it is a line. It's an n minus n dimensional hyperspace, uh, hyperplane. So uh, if n equals 2, then it's a one dimensional hyperplane. So that's just a line. If n equals 3, then it's a two dimensional hyperplane or a plane in R3. For the situation for n equals 2, I never get phone calls except when I do my recordings, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, let's continue with this. And uh, well, I just do not have a. Ah, there it is. Okay, let's uh, look at the situation in uh, R2. And uh, you can see this is the green line over here, that's the line L. Okay, given some line L, and this is the green one over here, we can uh, write it in the form of, eta of uh, E of theta and S uh, using its normal theta and its distance S from the origin. Okay, um, so... Um, these e of theta and s are all n minus one dimensional hyperplanes, and uh, on the other side, they parameterize all hyperplanes. Okay, so what does the tomograph do? It takes uh, um, the uh, attenuation function, and given a line, it computes the integral over that line. So uh, mathematically, what it does is uh, we want to define the main operator R, the radon transform, uh, the uh, model of the uh, computerized tomography. Uh, and uh, it takes a function f in S1. That was our image space. So it, it take, uh, we want to define Rf. And given a line or a hyperplane, it, uh, it, uh, it's defined as the integral over that hyperplane over f of x. Well, actually, d sigma of x, because this is an n minus n dimensional um, um, manifold down here. So uh, the correct measure to use here would be the n minus n dimensional submeasure. But uh, we simply write this as dx, right? Uh, and we know that it should be the uh, corresponding um, um, measure on the submanifold should be used here. Okay, so uh, the um, the uh, um, that radon transform is quite well defined by this thing. And so, where, where does it go from? Um, Rf is a line integral for n equals two and a plane integral for n equals three. Of course, because x times theta equals s, that's e of theta and s, is a line for n equals two and a plane for n equals 3. Now, uh, what are the corresponding function spaces? Um, R is an operator that takes a uh, function from S1. So over here, that's a function space 1. And it uh, computes a function on theta and S. And so that's a function on C. So uh, S2 is a function space that consists of functions that map from C to R are uh, then identified as the uh, integrals uh, are the uh, integrals of the attenuation function. Um, we can prove, uh, I think we're going to do that, that G is in fact C infinity again, and it's re rapidly decaying in S. So in some sense, it's also a Schwartz space on uh, C in this time. Okay, so um, what is the direct problem? Well, the direct problem is I give you the attenuation function and please compute what the computer tomograph would measure. So given f, and this is our attenuation function mu of what we started with, compute g equals to rf, and g is now a function on c. 
the inverse problem is given g, so given all the line integrals, compute a function f such that our f is equal to g. And of course, that's exactly what we are after. Uh, the computer tomograph wants to compute the attenuation functions. So that's exactly what we want to have. Okay, um, so line integrals in Rn. Yeah, that's another thing I should mention at this point. Um, may, for R3, this doesn't seem to make very, very much sense because uh, we expected also for n equals 3 to uh, the radon transform to uh, model uh, our tomograph. But um, if you look close, if you looked closely, then uh, you find that it didn't do that because the computer tomograph always computes line integrals and um, for n equals 3. Um, we're using plane integrals over here, so that's not what the radon. So that's not what the um, uh, what is actually measured. So um, we need to define an additional transform that actually all does the same thing for R three correctly, and that's the X-ray transform, and uh, it takes, uh, we need to somehow parameterize all lines in Rn or all lines in R3. And we do that by taking a line direction theta and some initial point y in theta prime. And uh, again, define this time uh, SF, X-ray transform S, uh, given an image f on theta and y as the integral over r f of y dy. So this is the line integral over this line. Oh, I'm not f of y. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I should correct that. It's of course not f of y dy because uh, y is uh, fixed. But let me just fix this. Of course, it's f of y plus t times theta dt. And uh, this time, this is really a one-dimensional integral. And uh, um, the, uh, um, the notion, the meaning of theta is quite different at this point, because uh, again, L is the green line that we have over here. Theta is the direction of the line. And uh, y is the projection of the origin onto that line. Okay, good. So uh, that was more or less is it. Uh, let me just formulate um, finally the. Well, I can you flat out in my four vorstellen. Hi. <laughs> so, um, so everything. If everything goes down, it really goes down. So, uh, but let me conclude by uh, writing down the final question that we have for the computerized tomography. What is really the task that we're trying to do given all line integrals of a function? And we will restrict ourselves to R2, compute the true image, or the true attenuation function, I will call it now. And of course, the question is, is that possible? Is that, uh, is that mathematically possible? So does the inversion operator of R, the inverse operator of R exist? And the quest for a second question, is it continuous? And uh, what we'll show is, it exists, that's very simple to show, but uh, in fact, it's discontinuous and uh, we'll have to do something about that again. <laughs>